Welcome back to Automate That, the automation recipe segment of Growth Decoded, where we actually show you how to put this stuff to practice, put this to use, um, put it in the software and make it happen for yourself. I am joined, as always, by my friend, Cody Lindley, the Marketplace Manager at Active Campaign. Cody, how are you doing? I'm doing great, guys. Um, you'll still see this banner in our next Automate That, but I'm going to be moving to a different space and a new filming location starting this weekend. Very exciting changes. There you go, Cody. I bet you wish you could automate the moving process, but unfortunately, <laughs> that is not how the real world works. Uh, here's us wearing chef hats. And then if you look at the top, we're wearing regular hats. So just, you know, just hats, hats on hats today. We're just um, hat men. Let's what get into say? it. This week's automation recipe of the week is the annual join date. Thank you, Cody. What, what are we looking at here? Yeah, so we wanted to choose uh, a recipe because, you know, marketing automation, what can it do? We know and we've gone over recipes that can uh, automate tasks that you're used to doing. We can also bake in business strategy and the next steps into automation as well. That's why annual join date thank you popped into our head when we started thinking about uh, the theme of this episode. So as you'll see here, um, right when it's about to be someone's uh, subscription date year, that date there, it's going to trigger them to go in. We're going to wait until it is their uh, anniversary date. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, and then they go through an if else, depending on what year it is, and they'll get a appropriate anniversary message, which is super exciting. And that anniversary message, as we'll talk about here in a second, can cover a wide range of uh, purposes. Um, so if we look at the left, the back of the baseball card statistics, as it were, um, what industry is this for? This is great for any industry. If you're a business, just celebrating your time with your contacts is always great. Letting them know how long you've been in communication is a great reminder. The features it's going to use, email and custom fields, as we see. Use cases, marketing, a little bit of sales if you want to bake that in as well, but just by default, at least marketing. Experience level starter and stage of the customer journey, nurture and educate. Right on, right on. Now, Cody, I'm thinking, um, looking at this, the, the nature of what this automation does, um, this this stage of the customer journey, this could also be a little bit of like, you know, grow and, and create advocacy as well, right? If they've been your customer for a year or two years, you know, you're providing that personal touch, that reminder that, hey, thanks for doing business with us. Um, you know, here's either an offer um, or, you know, just creating a, a more positive customer experience based on the fact that they've been your customer for so long. That's a great call out, Ernie. Yes, not only can it be a uh, grow and advocate step, again, going back to what you wanna use these messages for, you can create easily shareable messages so that people, it's just natural for them to be like, look at this delightful email I got. I'm gonna share it to a friend. I'm gonna share it on social media. I'm gonna do something so that way I'm spreading the word. And that, if that's advocacy. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so moving into kind of, you know, looking uh, zoomed out, what, what are we, uh, what are we able to do because of this automation recipe? Well, let's look at this first point. So let's just think about all the ways you talk to and contact your contacts. You know, you're reaching out to them. This is a consistent logical dialogue point, which is really amazing. Nobody's going to be surprised that you sent them an anniversary email. Oftentimes that's going to be met with delight. People are going to be like, oh yeah, I've been thinking about making this purchase or I've been happy customer for a year, you know? So this is a great point to just really think about. That's why we hammer home. What do you want these messages to achieve? Because you're really going to get their intention with these. Now, the second point, you can check in with your contacts to see where they are in their journey and thank them for their time. Let's not gloss over that. It's a great thing to tell someone, thank you for being a loyal customer or a loyal uh, brand advocate or, you know, whatever their role is in their life cycle journey. It's just a time to say, thank you. Um, also, you can make it, you know, reactive. You can put a survey in there. You can put something in there so that they're participating, letting you know where they are at in their journey as well. And then, of course, the third point, this is where the sales come in. This is a great touch point for a purchase or a repurchase. People have been sitting on the fence. You remind them, maybe include an offer. Hey, it's been a year. We just wanted to know how you're doing. Or they're already a happy customer and it's, hey, it's been a year. Do you have the complete experience yet? You know, this is a great time to just like in a very small, subtle way, uh, remind them to make a purchase or to purchase again from you. 
Yeah, and what I really love about this automation recipe is the combination, the balance between automation and personalization, right? Oftentimes, you know, you kind of think about those two things as being at odds with each other. Automation being the same thing over and over again, personalization being unique to the individual. Um, but what's great about this one is that it uses automation to provide that individual experience because that date is specific to that contact, right? Like no, mm -hmm. not every contact is going to receive the same email at the same time. They might uh, receive the same email if they've been around for a year or, um, you know, whatever the, the case may be in terms of when you send this email, but it's definitely going to be that balance between the two. Exactly, Ernie. And that's why we definitely real quick call out uh, personalization tags are huge in these campaigns saying names, saying you've been with us since a date, you know, there are all these fields that you've collected so much information. And this is a great campaign to put them to use in. Yeah, absolutely. So if we're going to the automation store here, oh, too far. Getting ahead of ourselves. What are what are we putting in the cart if we're uh, if we're going to the store? Well, if we're going to the store, we're going to get one date based trigger. We're going to get one wait step, two if else actions to start, and two send in, send email actions to start. And we'll explain why we're saying to start when we get to the journey of the recipe slide. All right, perfect. So, mise en place. We've got the ingredients home. We've got them on the counter. We got to figure out what we need to do before we we start building this thing. What uh what steps do we need to take first? Yeah. So the very first thing, determine if you want to use the default date subscribed, which is a default field in your active campaign account. It will be the date that someone has signed up for the very first list they're a part of. So it'll be that date. Or decide if you want to use a custom date field for a specific date. That's because you know your business better than we ever could. So maybe the very first time they subscribe to your list is the anniversary you want to celebrate. Or maybe it's when they became a paying member. Or maybe it's when they joined your community. There's so many different ways that you can say, this is our anniversary. You just want to figure that out ahead of time so that you already have that custom field built out if you're using one. But if not, like I said, the date subscribe works great and right out of the box. And of course, the second thing here, you again, process over automation. We want to make sure it's on paper first. Define what that messaging is for each anniversary. Like I've said, you can definitely include just a quick, hey, thanks for being here year. Hey, thanks for being here two years. Messages and be done for the day. It can still cause delight, still really get some nice word of mouth. But this is when you're, like we've said, that's this is when you're going to get their attention. They've been with you for a year. This is the time to, if they're not sold on something, sell them on something perhaps. This is the time to reach out and ask them to engage with you. Tell them about yourself. Tell them where they are. You can get a lot of great updates on contacts through this uh, automation recipe. Yeah. And what's great about this is just the idea that one, you could use even different messaging for each subsequent anniversary or each subsequent significant date, whatever that might be. You know, one is one is good, but two could be great. Three could be even better than that. Um, and, and it's a great way to, you know, kind of think about it. Marketing automation doesn't stop at the point of conversion. That's something we're, we're kind of exploring here in this episode is that, you know, it doesn't end at the point of conversion. It doesn't end when they become a customer because, uh, these days, you know, you want to have a relationship with the brand, and this is a great way to continue that relationship, continue that dialogue, let them know how much you appreciate them, even after that that point of conversion where you know the funnel might stop, but the customer life cycle is still going to go on. So, I'm if nodding emphatically over here, Ernie, because I can't agree with you more. And one thing I want to point out real quick while we're still on this slide, this is a great place to put in some breadcrumbs for where people, if you're not doing a survey, you can still put in where they should be. And your contacts can know if they're above or below that, what a typical first year in your system is like, oh, mm. you know, you've probably bought one of our things. You've probably uh, watched a few of our videos and stuff. And those are things you can link out to. So if someone hasn't, you're putting that seed in the idea, oh, that's where we should be at this point in my journey with you. Yeah, that's a that's a great call out too. Um, and that's just kind of furthering along the uh, the additional, you know, marketing automation that you can have if you're linking out to that content, providing um, breadcrumbs, like you said, to, uh, to enhance that experience even more. All right, so here is what the recipe actually looks like. Um, we've got a couple of different branches here, a couple of different questions. Cody, take us through the journey. What, uh, what's going on here? Yeah, so probably the first thing you're going to notice is that they enter a day before their uh, subscription date, and then they wait a day. And you might be wondering why that is. That's because if we just use just the subscription date, the day they'd subscribed, they'd be getting a, you've been here for your email. So we set it a day before so that 364 days after they've joined, they enter, they wait a day, and then we hit these if else actions, which all those conditions are, are simply where they sent the email under the no path. So they will not meet the condition the first time receive that first year email, 
then the next time through they'll go through that first if else action to the second one where it'll say have they received the second year and they haven't and like we talk about we only wanted to put uh two years in here just as an example but we highly encourage you build out one for every year or one for um five years, 10 years, at least big milestones, but you're going to get a lot of um, traction on these. So we definitely encourage um, making sure you build out beyond just the example two years here. Yeah, absolutely. And that looks like then you could use, you know, the different milestones to write different messaging, depending on whatever that anniversary is, right? You might exactly. want to, you might want to include a different message for a five year versus a two year versus a one year. Um, and then and Cody, one question I have with this date based trigger, um, you know, we see a lot of special anniversary coupons like your birthday or graduation day or something like mm -hmm. that. Is this the same kind of logic that you would use for sending a, a special campaign on, on those types of campaigns? Yeah, same type of trigger. You'd use a date base. As we mentioned earlier too, um, what you define as your anniversary date could be different. Maybe it's when someone's a paying customer. Maybe it's when someone has purchased for you from the first time. But yeah, this is the type of trigger you would use for any of those uh, custom date fields that you've captured a date for. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So what, uh, what do we got here on this slide? What's, uh, what's related to the anniversary date automation yes. recipe? So, uh, here, here we'll show a couple of different ones. One is a industry specific one, which is travel special occasion rebooking. So when you mm. know that someone you've tagged a trip as a special occasion, maybe it's their anniversary, maybe it's a honeymoon, whatever it is, a year later, you can start sending out messages a little bit before a year, to be fair, saying, hey, we know your special day is coming up. We'd like to celebrate with you. Um, here's an offer or don't forget a book, you know, with us. It's a really great way and kind of an industry specific way to see how you could tweak this recipe. Mm -hmm. um, if you're wanting just to celebrate a special day, we also wanted to include our birthday and anniversary co coupon email, um, which, you know, same thing when it is your birthday or your anniversary or whatever special occasion, you're going to go send an email to them with a coupon to say, hey, thank you so much. We wanted to celebrate you. You know, a bunch of different businesses do it. It's a very easy, great thing to do to increase your sales. And then last year, if we're just thinking of tracking uh, customer engagement and various things and surrounding rewarding someone around those actions, we included our coupon email cycle for customer engagement. What happens is when a user takes certain actions, we increase the lead score. Once they've met a threshold, they receive a coupon, their lead score goes right back down to zero and they can start the process again. Or if you only wanna give them that coupon once, you can easily build in a tag and make sure anyone who's already used the coupon does not get a second coupon. Awesome. I, I love this first one here that uh, the industry specific idea. So, you know, mm -hmm. you can definitely think about your business, your industry. What is what is unique to the industry or what would only make sense? Kind of get creative with the thinking here. You know, the date based automation trigger is, uh, you know, as we mentioned, a great way to add like an additional level of personalization into the automation and into your email marketing or marketing automation strategy. So, you know, thinking about when somebody purchases a product, what is the, the general lifespan before they might need another one? You know, that could be uh, another use case that you would bring in here. But I just love the idea, you know, of kind of thinking outside the box with that, that travel use case there. Yeah, um, thanks. And I think that concludes what we've got for you for, for Automate That this week uh, in this, this week's installment of Growth Decoded. Um, as they say, that's that. Automated. Thanks for having me, Ernie. Always a pleasure, Cody. I will see you soon, my friend. See you soon.